Conduction, convection, and radiation are three main modes of heat transfer. We have equations for solving for heat transfer with a single mode of conduction, but sometimes we have multi-mode heat transfer. So for example, we have conduction and convection happening at the same time. This is the case if you're overheated and you're sitting under a running ceiling fan. So that fan is blowing cool air past you via convection, and then the cooler air... In this problem, we have a polymer slab that's sitting on a hot plate. So that hot plate keeps one side of the slab at a constant temperature. We have heat transfer through the slab, up into the air surrounding the slab, and we want to find out what's the rate of that heat transfer from the side of the slab that's touching the hot plate into the air. We're going to start with drawing a diagram of this particular scenario. That will help us keep our heat transfer straight. All right, so we're going from the bottom of the slab here up into the air. We have conduction through that solid slab and convection into the air. And so we're going to bundle all that heat transfer together into our overall heat transfer coefficient. This is what the equation is going to look like. All right, U is our overall heat transfer coefficient here. And the units on that are watts per meter squared Kelvin. So it does actually have the same units as our convective heat transfer coefficient, which is nice. A is the area our heat is being transferred through. So here, because our heat transfer is in the direction of the thickness of the slab, our area is going to be the length times the width of that slab. And then we have our temperature difference. So T1 is the side of the slab that is touching the plate. T2 is the side of the slab exposed to the air. So let's label our diagram accordingly. So before we solve for Q, we need to figure out what U is, our overall heat transfer coefficient. And to do that, we need to solve for it using the information we have. Here's the equation for the overall heat transfer coefficient, or more specifically, 1 over UA, because that's actually the best way to write this. All right, there's our equation for 1 over UA. The reason I'm writing 1 over UA is because I can write the right-hand side exactly like you see here. If I solved for UA, I would have to do 1 over this entire side here, which makes it pretty messy. But algebraically, you can't flip these terms individually and say, well, that's equal to UA. does not work that way. So this is why we write 1 over UA, because this makes the equation a bit simpler to look at. Let's break down the equation for 1 over UA. We write this by following what modes of heat transfer we have as we move from one point in our system to the next. So 1 over HA takes care of the convective heat transfer from the air to the slab. Delta X1 over K1A takes care of the heat transfer through that first layer of the slab, because remember, it's a bi-layer, so there's two layers to this thing. We have two different thermal conductivities, so we need to treat them separately. So there's a first layer of the slab. Delta X2 over K2A is going through our second layer of the slab. Then we're at our hot plate. We can stop, because that's where our first temperature is. So we're going from the air through the first layer of the slab then through the second layer of the slab, and we stop there. So when you're writing your equation for 1 over UA, it isn't a set equation like Q equals UA delta T right here. 1 over UA depends on what your system is and where you're transferring heat to. So remember that. Take a careful look at your diagram and make sure you're accounting for all the different modes of heat transfer that happen. One thing I want to point out here is because we have a slab, we have constant area that we're transferring heat through. And this is nice because now we just multiply the entire equation by area and all these A's will go away. So let's see what that looks like. All right. 
Now remember, because this is one over u is equal to an entire right hand side, I can't just flip all of these individual terms on the right hand side to get u. I have to solve for one over u and then take one over whatever that number is. So if one over u is 0.1, let's say, then u is one over 0.1, and that's 10. So remember, you have to solve for this entire side before you take the reciprocal. It does not work if you flip each term individually. So remember that. All right, we are given our convective heat transfer coefficient. It is 20 watts per meter squared Kelvin. We are given our delta x's. Those are our thicknesses of the layers. We're given our k's, our thermal conductivities for each layer. So let's plug all those numbers in and solve for one over u. Okay, one over u is 0.14 meters squared Kelvin per watts. So where'd those units come from? Those are just the reciprocal units for u. So if we take both sides and take the reciprocal of them, we do 1 over 0 0.140, this is what we get. Okay, u is equal to 7.13 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Now, we can take u and plug it into our original equation for q up here. We've got our area, we can solve for it. It's the length times the width, remember? And then we've got our two temperatures. So T1 is the side of the slab touching the hot plate. T2 is the air temperature, 27C. So let's plug everything in and solve. And there you have it. Q is equal to 934.5 watts. The positive value on Q means that heat is going from the bottom of that slab, where the hot plate is, up into the air. And this is correct. This is the direction of heat transfer because you're going from a higher temperature to a lower temperature. So Q is going to be positive and the plate is losing heat to the air. So in other words, the air is being warmed up by the slab, which is what's actually physically going on. If you ever get tangled up with your signs, just remember to do a reality check and figure out which way should the heat be going, and that'll help you straighten out your signs. I want to emphasize again that this equation for 1 over UA is not the end-all be-all equation for 1 over UA. This is for this particular scenario. So if you had three different layers in your slab, you would have to add another delta x over ka layer. If you had the slab being held by clamps, and so you had air on both sides of the slab, let's say you had a stream of hot air on top and a stream of cold air on the bottom, then you would have two convection terms because you have two different areas where you have transfer of heat from a solid to a fluid. So keep in mind the scenario you draw when you write out your equation for 1 over ua. That will help match up what's going on in your problem to what you're solving for. Once you have ua, you can just plug it in, solve for your rate of heat transfer. This equation works very well for slabs, but it does not work so well for cylinders. The Q over UA equation will work fine as long as you have the right area matched up to your overall heat transfer coefficient, but this 1 over UA equation needs to change to account for the different radii in your cylinder. We'll look at that in a different video. Just keep in mind that what you saw in this video is for slabs only. Don't try to use it with cylinders.